Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and this is a bonus episode. Uh, so I wanna thank whoever last month bought a copy of my book. I think I, I actually told, sold two books, so I got $6 deposited in my account today, and I was like, you know what? The, like the 20 bucks I have in there, I gotta use, or 18 bucks, I gotta use that for food. Uh, but the $6 I wasn't expecting, and that is just enough money to go buy Venom number one. So I figured, screw it, I spent all morning cleaning my room, I'm getting ready for a guest to come over, we're gonna stream together and hang out for a little bit, I haven't seen her in a while, so that's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'll record that and put it on the Venom stream, and we'll have that up here on YouTube like in a couple days, hopefully. Uh, but, uh, but I was just so excited, it's the day Venom comes out, it's May 9th, uh, two days before my birthday and I also got an awesome birthday gift from my mom she sent me a PlayStation 4 with a headset so I will be streaming on that probably starting next week um, I don't know what game we'll stream yet but we'll figure it out uh, assuming I can maybe squeeze together $15 off of my check I might get Resident Evil Code Veronica X which is something I have not played it's one of the few Resident Evil games I have not played on my stream uh, that I've been unable to stream because it was a PS4 like exclusive that you could buy so uh, yeah that, that sucked being an Xbox owner for that one uh, but now we can play it so we'll get into that soon but today I'm gonna go in here and get the free code so before we do anything boom there's the digital code and uh, check that out first person to put that code in gets the free venom number one and I know I'm interrupting ultimate week for this but I thought it would be worth it I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to you know wanting me to review it some of you even offered to give me your digital codes which is super nice of you guys so thank you so if, if you're still wanting to get rid of the digital codes you know you can leave them in the comments you can share them with each other if you want I just thought that was super nice that you guys were actually offering me something like that which was really cool since I usually give those away you guys are like hey dude I'll give you my digital code no problem but save it I appreciate that you guys have actually supported me someone out there bought two of my books two different people bought one book each and that was enough to get me venom number one today so I'm so excited so without further ado let me go read it and let's review it we're here with Venom number one. I'm so excited I was able to get this. Uh, every once in a while, I might see someone will buy like my book Rhino, my novel, my crime novel, uh, or they'll pick up like Soul Star or Lan Vital. The Soul Star money, I try to put that aside, and then after it hits like 30, 40 bucks, I try to give it to the Aneurysm Foundation or do something good with it. Uh, but with uh, with this, the, these were actually a Rhino copy and a, a copy of Lan Vital, uh, which I was like, hey, awesome! Someone bought that and is trying it out. Um, so I had that $6 like in my account and I was like, all right, you know what? The only thing I can think of to do with the $6 is to go spend it on this book. Because a lot of you guys were like, dude, you got to read it. You got to read it. So I'm glad I did. I'm glad I picked it up and read it. And now let's get into my review and I'll tell you my thoughts of Venom number one. Venom number one is written by Donnie Cates and it has art by Ryan Stegman. And uh, overall, I think this book was pretty good. Uh, actually, it was better than pretty good. It was really good. Uh, but there's, I have some little nitpicky fan things, of course, like I always do. Uh, but, uh, and also there's a couple things that kind of drive me nuts that we talked about before. But what I liked is that they do incorporate a lot of the different uh, time periods of Venom stories into this. They make references in subtle and not so subtle ways and I think all of them are handled really well. I think Donnie Kate structured overall a great story and I think Ryan Stegman drew the living hell out of this book. So without go, you know, before I get into any minor nitpicky negatives, I want to say that overall this was awesome and you should go pick it up. Uh, and if you're out there and you won the free digital code, let me know what you think of this issue. And if you read it yourself, let me know in the comments what you thought of it as well. Uh, but to dive in a little bit, you know, when we start off, that has this uh, nightmare sequence, and I actually like the way it's colored. It's definitely different than the rest of the book. They did a great job putting this weird like filter on it to uh, to make it feel different than the way the rest of the book feels. And it's a little bit more bright. You know, it's set in like a you know like an ancient Norse time, uh, and you have these guys talking about how their castle is being invaded and they're waiting for Beowulf hopefully to show up to help them fight whatever this creature is. And then this creature, which is very symbiote-esque, bursts in. Uh, rips all the guys out, throws their bodies into the field, and devours all of them. And then it cuts to modern day, and we see Eddie Brock kind of hanging out, and he's, um, you know, like thunder, there's like a thunderstorm going on, because there's a thunderstorm in the nightmare sequence too, and there's a thunderstorm that happens, and it wakes Eddie Brock up. Uh, and then also the nightmare wakes him up too, but he realizes that it's not his nightmare, it's his symbiote's nightmare. And he starts talking with it, and we start to learn that because at first when I was at first glance when I was seeing this and I saw preview pages I was thinking that this was going to retcon most of the stuff we've seen it wasn't going to reference the Costa run it wasn't going to reference anything that else came out and at first I was like yeah that's you know part of me thinks that's okay but another part of me is like hey even if it's bad continuity 
you know, there's a part of me that once, you know, it, it still happened and you got to kind of acknowledge it. And I think Donnie Cates does a good job of acknowledging things while moving forward with the character. And I think that's very key when a new writer comes on. A lot of times they just don't pay attention to what came before and move forward. And I felt there was very subtle things in here that showed he was paying attention to what happened before. And you find out in the letters column that they actually started this book a year ago. And that's when they started brainstorming and writing it. So I imagine that uh, Donnie Cates was picking up the Mike Costa Venom comics and reading them to see which direction he was taking Venom in so that he could know where to, you know, pick up from, you know, the start of his story where Costa was ending his story. And that's kind of what happens. I would say maybe a few months pass, even though it doesn't state it in the book, because Eddie Brock, the, the indicator is visually. Eddie Brock has long hair um, and, the, you know, the suit is acting differently. You know, last we saw in the Costa run, Eddie and the suit were, you know, doing well. They, you know, things were actually going well for them. They had a great relationship with each other. They had the baby and it's being held at Alchemex and it's being nurtured over there. And so now Eddie, you know, is like kind of, um, you know, trying to figure out what's wrong with the suit because now all of a sudden it's having nightmares and that's a, just another weird thing and it's pattern of weird behavior that it's been having lately. And he starts to list that it's, it's, it's being erratic and it gets vicious sometimes and it starts to you know be you know attack and so he doesn't want it to attack and kill uh, randomly because both of them have made so much progress you know being heroes so he kind of does and Donnie Cates does kind of subtly reference hey these guys were on a better path but now they've deviated and we don't know why and so there's like a mystery building of what's going on and so Eddie the way he deals with the symbiote you know being too loud in his head as he's taking these pills that are um, you know silencing the voices in his head essentially so they're like you know antipsychotics and he's taking them to kind of shut up the symbiote and the symbiote is affected by them because it's attached to him so any chemical difference and change that happens to Eddie happens to the suit but what it does is it silences Eddie so Eddie can think on his own because he's trying to figure out how to help the suit but the suit keeps being erratic and shouting things in his head and he can't think straight so he's like all right let's let's silence it for now and then let's figure out what's going on but in his little apartment you see Eddie is trying to have a life again He's in this little apartment in New York. Uh, it's pretty much empty. There's just a mattress on the floor, and there's a like a police scanner on. And he's like hearing about uh, a possible deal going down. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go check it out. And then he goes out into the night as Eddie Brock and not as Venom. Uh, and before we get into that, I want to talk about another pet peeve of mine, which is this giant uh, ugly page right here. Uh, I know someone probably worked hard on this uh but uh I, I you know it's like the post jonathan hickman era of comics where we get these splash pages of letters and the title card and it's like i don't need this this is i would rather i know ryan stegman drew a lot in this book and i don't know what more you could have done with one more page but i would have rather had one more drawn page than this or just not a page just make it one um you know th having this doesn't really do much for me i don't know it's a small pet peeve it did not i the book loses no points for doing it it's just me pointing it out uh, that i don't understand why uh these guys are doing this stuff in comics nowadays i just just keep it simple one page move on i want to get to the story uh wasting all this page and all this black ink seems like just a waste to me um but hopefully they won't do that in future issues uh, but again, I'm not taking any points off. I, I still love the book. Um, and, uh, and so here we have, you know, so Eddie does go out in the middle of the night, but he, at first he goes out as a human, but then they cut here and he's as Venom, but he's in control, I guess. See, this part is where it gets kind of funny to me because I know he silenced the symbiote, but yet he could still call on it and wear it and swing around the city with it. So that was interesting to me. I'm sure there's an explanation for it. I just... I don't know what it could be. Uh, I guess it just, the antipsychotics put Eddie in complete control of both him and the symbiote, and the symbiote just takes a nap, but Eddie can still access it. I'm, I'm guessing that's, I mean, that's clearly what has happened here, so I'm guessing that's what it is. But we get Jack Lantern. We talk about him a lot. I think the Gibbon and some other characters are here, but Jack Lantern is basically selling uh, Norman Osborn tech that has been confiscated, and he uh, acquired it somehow, and he's trying to sell it to these low-level guys to get them, you know, up to you know B status or C status, uh, up from like D and F status is which what they all are. Uh, and then Eddie is just talking about how these days he doesn't you know with the suit being uh, sporadic he doesn't uh, engage in battle anymore. He's trying to get pictures and uh, and come up with a story to sell. And he talks about how he lost a job at the place called the Fact Sheet. Um, and then now he's trying to get work for he's trying to be a work for hire guy. And I don't know why most people would hire him. Obviously he has a sketchy path. So hopefully they'll dive into that of how you know he can 
get work and maybe someone is sympathetic to second chances maybe it could build a, a supporting cast for him maybe he can get a job somewhere else you know like i i don't know i just want to see something maybe he can end up working with phil urich or something uh it would be cool to see something like that happen uh, but he does mention that he still needs to eat needs he needs to keep the roof over his head so he is out there taking photographs and trying to you know provide evidence and stories that way and so he's taking pictures of uh, of Jack Lantern being arrested. But then Jack Lantern breaks free. He shoots a cop, and he starts running. And then Eddie actually says, "All right, well, it doesn't matter what antipsychotics I took. It doesn't matter what's going on. The rage now is building inside me. An innocent uh, police officer was just killed, and uh, and and Jack Lantern is now getting away. So uh, the suit just takes over, and I become a passenger in my own body. So uh, so the transformation for him is a lot more vicious, and you know turns quickly this time. And uh, Venom." jumps down, lands on Jack Lantern, and actually pokes his eye out, like his right eye, just shoves his thumb right into his eye. Because uh, cause the Jack Lantern's like, look, I won't tell anyone what I saw or what, you know, what's going on. And the suit's like, yeah, you're right. You won't tell anyone what you saw. And then he, boom, pokes his eye out. Um, before he can get to the other eye, more cops show up. They start shooting at the symbiote. And then something really weird happens. He turns and reveals himself, and he's this. He's like this creepy, awesome, uh, possessed red veins coming out of him, swirl on his head, red spider on his chest. He's been possessed by something. He starts speaking the weird language that he heard in its dream at the beginning of the story. So whatever that big monster that took out Beowulf's men are, it is now back and it is possessing the symbiote. And that is what's been driving it crazy lately. And so it sends it off the rails and it is trying to kill these cops. Uh, and Eddie's screaming at it, please don't kill them, please don't kill them. They're innocents. They're innocent men. They're just doing their job. Don't kill them. And the suit is not listening. Uh, but luckily for Eddie, an explosive device gets shot right inside the symbiote's face and uh, someone sets it off and blows it up. <laughs> and then he says, please just kill us. Kill us so we don't kill another innocent person. We're trying to be better. But the bomb or detonation does not kill the symbiote. It does weaken it greatly and it exposes Eddie Brock and this silhouette shows up. He has a dart gun and he shoots Eddie Brock in the neck. And he's like, first he's like, Flash, Flash Thompson, I need your help. And Eddie's like... I don't flash. He's like, I'm not flash Thompson. And the guy's like, Oh crap. He's like, well, that's disappointing, but you know what you're going to have to do. So he shoots a trank dart in Eddie's uh, neck and knocks him in the symbiote out and, uh, and then takes him to a very creepy underground <laughs> facility, uh, equipped with a furnace right behind Eddie Brock. He's tied to a chair and there's a furnace right at his back, weakening the symbiote. And there's a low level amount of sound that's being uh, played in the room that Eddie can't hear, but it's also affecting the symbiote and it's driving it a little mad uh so it's sitting there screaming at eddie wake up wake up and eddie's like uh, you know what's going on where are we and he's like and then he's like shut up just for a second shut up and this and the the guy who's across from him is like oh he's like oh you're not talking to me are you he's like you're talking to the thing attached to you and he's like yeah that's okay he's like take a minute and you know we'll get down to brass tacks so this guy reveals himself to be someone named Rex, and he also tells Eddie Brock, or asks him, what do you know about Project Rebirth? And Eddie's like, well, I know it was the program that created Captain America. And he's like, yeah, but there was a 2.0. What do you know about it? And Eddie's like, I don't know much about it. He's like, uh, that was Flash Thompson, man. He's like, Flash Thompson was a group of the government hired Flash Thompson to become the new Venom. They put the suit on him for 24 hours. Then they would separate him, uh, you know, se separate the two so that it wouldn't be a full bonding. And uh, they would send him on missions. And, uh, and you know, through the use of the symbiote, he got his legs back and he was a soldier again. Uh, so it was like a win-win. He goes, but that's all I know. And he goes, so uh, other than that, you know, I don't know anything about it. And he goes, uh, so so what? Are they trying to do that again? He's like, and, the, you know, Rex is like, yeah. He's like, well, that, that wasn't the first time they did it. And actually, you're not the first host that this symbiote had. And obviously, Eddie knows, you know, he thinks Peter was. Uh, but he's like, wait, you, okay, I'm not the first host. He's like, yeah, you and Flash, you're just... The, you were the latest hosts in this symbiote thing that the Agent Venom, that was the latest version of that. He's like, there was actually a Project Rebirth 2.0 after Captain America went away there was a time where there were symbiotes uh, being, you know, possessing humans, and they were being used for the government to carry out specific missions. So Agent Venom, that was not the first time there was an Agent Venom, and we were called Sim Soldiers, S-Y-M, Sim Soldiers, and uh, we were part of Project Rebirth 2, so he shows him a picture. He's like, my name is Rex, which is interesting because apparently this five-part story that kicks off this book is called Rex, like when it's put in a trade paperback, it's called Rex. And so I'm wondering if Rex here is the bad guy, which would be pretty interesting. And he does have 
got a scar on his face, so he's so far he's looking like a bad guy, uh, and he knows a lot about the symbiote. And he says, you know, he's like, do you even know the symbiote's name? And Eddie's like, I never thought to ask, I guess. And he's like, he's like, dude, you have no idea what you're in into. And he's like, and this is not the first time that this symbiote has had a human host. Uh, surprise, you know, surprising to you, like you, you know, he doesn't know about Peter Parker, but he's like, you and Flash. He's like, you guys weren't the first. He's like, this suit it belonged to someone else uh, before, and there were other symbiotes. And Eddie's like, where'd they come from? He's like, well, that's what I need you for. He's like, my men. He's like, we were all part of a program. And he's like, I joined S.H.I.E.L.D. after uh, the program ended, and I was the only one who didn't go crazy. All my other, you know, teammates, they kept their symbiotes for longer than I did, and it drove them insane. And now they're being taken somewhere to be executed and wiped out and burned along with their symbiotes. So for me, I was like, a little, I started to get a little annoyed again, because like I always say, every time a new writer comes on, they tell one of three stories. It's always Eddie Brock, and there's like a symbiote, you know, uh, being born, whether it's Toxin or Carnage or, or the five symbiotes or something like that, or it's just them fighting another symbiote, or it's the symbiote separating from Eddie to go to someone else. And this kind of has all of them in one, in a way. And so there was a part of me that was kind of like, oh, I thought we were genuinely going to get something different here. I thought we weren't going to deal with other symbiotes. I thought we were going to deal with Eddie Brock versus like a giant monster. And it seems like we may still get that, but symbiotes are still somehow involved. And uh, and so I'm hoping Donny Cates has a nice surprise for us because seeing this, that was like one of my, my you know, one of my minuses for this book as far as points go. I was like, oh man, more symbiotes. Uh, and, and now they're adding this history because this is what I was a little bit afraid of when I saw Donny Cates do those interviews. He was saying how, uh, oh, we don't really know the full story of Eddie Brock in the symbiote's past. And it's like, well, we kind of do. If you read Planet of the Symbiotes, you know that the symbiote was exiled from Clintar for being emotional. So how did it get exiled from Clintar uh, and then get sent straight to Battle World? And then it from there goes to Peter Parker and then from there comes to Earth and goes to Eddie Brock. So how so are you saying it was on Earth? in like the 60s, like after Captain America, like fought in World War II and then after Korea and then like into the 60s, you know, like and when Rex had it or something, like are you saying that it was here then and then went to up, up to space to Clintar and then went to Battleworld? Like, so it's starting to get a little muddy there for me and maybe I'm reading too much into it. I, I want to see where the story goes, but for me, I'm I'm like, oh, I'm pumping the brakes a little bit of loving this too, too much because I'm starting to fear what I was fearing was that, uh, you know, the the writer of this book being like, oh, I know everything about Venom. And then now just kind of making their own continuity uh, without fitting it into the old ones. Although I think there's a lot of things in this book that do fit in nicely to other continuity and do reference things. Um, but I think there's also that where it's like, all right, this feels like a big departure and it looks like that maybe the reason it had that nightmare was because it existed back in like the Beowulf times and it was sent here to earth at that time as well so I'm really interested to see how Donnie Cates weaves in this story of the symbiote and its backstory and how it got I mean not that I need every little detail explained but I just want a little bit of a, a concrete you know uh, vision for this the suit's backstory and hopefully we'll get that in this run and I, I trust Donnie Cates I mean he was he did a great job on that Thanos run and I really like Damnation with Doctor Strange and all those characters so I, I have faith I'm definitely not you know you know giving up no, I'm definitely not giving up after issue one uh, I will keep reading and keep going um, it's Venom so I'm gonna buy every issue uh, but I just want to you know I'm, I'm curious to see where they go with that uh, so when Rick says that he shows up and he hires Eddie and he's like look you're not Flash Thompson, my, my info might be outdated, but I need you as a symbiote to help me rescue these guys. I can't do it, I'm not superhuman anymore, but if you notice, like, you know, um, he's asking all these really interesting questions, like, you know, do you know the suit's name? No, you don't know the suit's name? Okay, well, do you know that when you're wearing it, you actually don't age? He's like, because look at me, I should actually be way older than I am right now, but because I had a symbiote, I'm actually still around the same age I was when I first had it. So there are interesting uh, scientific things happening to the human hosts of these. So that could be something interesting too that we find out that could be told to Peter Parker or Flash Thompson or Matt Gargan. Those were other hosts uh, that had the suit. So it would be really interesting. Not Angelo because he died. Uh, but it would be really interesting to see like if those people's lives have slow down in the aging as well um that would be pretty neat good way to explain some of these characters living longer uh than they probably should even though it's fictional and you just kind of got to buy into it um 
But that was, I thought that was neat. And then Eddie's like, all right, I want to do the right thing. I want to save these soldiers. It, it, you know, and he kind of relates. He's like, all right, they're, they're crazy. They kind of lost their minds. You know, we kind of felt like we have and had a bad past with that too. So let's go save these guys. Maybe there's some redemption in that for us as well. So they go and get involved. There's this great splash page. I'm actually going to show you guys right now uh, where Eddie just goes and stands in front of the truck and then boom just stops it and then the two guards come out and if you before you're like hey those are innocent guards they actually not they actually say hey it's probably just another homeless person because they're in the underground shield tunnels and they're transporting these guys these five symbiotes away or whatever or four symbiotes and they're transporting them away but they they say oh it's another homeless guy they're like yeah just kill him like no one's gonna notice so right away eddie's like oh did you hear that suit these aren't nice people and the suit's like yeah let's do this so now they're working in unison together again uh the craziness has gone away and the suit's not being possessed anymore and him and eddie you know as one kick the crap out of these guys and it's a pretty awesome fight until the back doors of this transport unit bust open and the four symbiotes i think it's four of them they jump out and they are speaking the same language that the that venom's or eddie's symbiote was uh speaking you know earlier in the ep, uh, issue uh and they're speaking that weird language and yes there are four of them and they show up and they're all possessed as well just the way Eddie's uh, symbiote was in the beginning, and you can see the close-up of that one there. So these four come out, they're standing in the fire, and they're not even that harmed by it, and they beat the crap out of Eddie because his suit leaves him. And he's like, no, where are you going? And he's just by himself, and the suit's that afraid. But then he finds out that the suit was forced off him. These four creatures, psionically almost, pushed the suit away to save it, and they just wanted to kill the host. So they separated Eddie from the suit, mentally. And then they went up and stabbed Eddie right through the chest. And then after that, they all four got back into the truck. There's like a container in there, and the suit's like, what's that container? What is it? What's going on? They go in there, and then there's an explosion, and the dead bodies of those four hosts that were part of the, sim the symbiotes were attached to those four human hosts fall out as skeletons and die and those symbiotes either merged or formed something and whisks off into the sky and eddie's sitting there with a hole in his chest and the symbiotes bonding with him trying to heal him kind of like the way it did with ann wang so there's all these like cool visual nods to like past stories and stuff i think ryan stegman and donnie cates whether it was intentional or not i like to think they were intentional they did great jobs referencing things um with visual you know using visuals and using key words and nothing more key than this this was really neat at the very end of the book the creature goes up and those dead bodies were whispering something in the weird language language before they died and Eddie's like what what does it say and the suit's trying to remember the language it's like I remember this language why can't I remember my life you know it's trying to figure out who it is and what it is and it remembers language it goes wait I know what they're saying and he says God Eddie God is coming and as Eddie is a you know a devout Catholic and a, you know had that part of his origin you know his background the last line of this book is God is coming and this giant creature is flying up into the sky uh, and, you know, over New York City as the thunderstorm hits its, uh, you know, zenith and its peak. And so, uh, and then Eddie's down there in the sewer dying, bleeding out with the suit trying to save him. And I thought that was great. I mean, this overall, like I said, few minor nitpicky things and some questions certainly that of course I would have as a hardcore Venom fan, uh, but overall none of them tore me away from liking this book this i was worried about it the last couple days because i read the preview pages and i was like oh what do you mean the suit's out of control why is the suit out of control they just spent a whole like year and a half in mike costa's run gaining gaining control back and making it sane again why is it acting insane when you see that it's a possession thing and it's a cr ancient creature and all this it it makes a, it's really cool it makes a lot more sense uh but again it's involving other symbiotes so that's kind of a little bit of a minus but i still give this book a 4.5 stars out of uh, you know 4.5 stars out of five stars, stars. Uh, so 4.5 that's my overall rating of this that's how much i like this book and i hope and encourage all of you to go pick it up i know i told all the spoilers in this i apologize uh hopefully that doesn't deter any of you guys from getting it because i still think it's it was way better than i thought it was and i am a donnie cates fan and i'm a ryan stegman fan and they were hyping it up a lot and uh and also we were talking about on this show kind of hyping it up some and i was worried in the last couple days if it was going to live up to that hype but it certainly did and it surpassed it for me so 4.5 for me you guys let me know what you think in the comments below of this issue and i think the second issue comes out just in a couple weeks so when it does, I will make sure I pick it up for you guys and review it immediately. So without further ado, we're going to return back to Ultimate Week and we're going to do in the next episode, we're going to review and discuss War of the Symbiotes from the Ultimate Comics. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know your comments down below. Appreciate you watching. See you in the future. Peace.